Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, it's that time of the month when replays last just a little bit longer. So you know what to do if you haven't got time to watch it now. Dump it in your watch later playlist and catch it when you have a chance. I won't be cross, I promise. Why? Because it means another YouTube view for the old algorithm. And while we're talking about algorithm, get down there and smash ye old like and subscribe button, will you? You know it does wonders for both the channel and my personal ego, which is the most important thing after all. Uh, what have I got for you? today it's going to be custom 6v6 it's on a generated map i'm afraid i know there's a decent sized cohort of you out there desperate for the next sentence episode i'm on the lookout i promise i don't have any replays in my arsenal that qualify so far so if you're sitting on a decent sentence replay or indeed any other kind of replay you think would feature well on the channel do send it my way i just need the replay id which is the file name send it over through all the usual channels facebook twitter uh, through discord if you're one of my patreon fans my patreon subs only a dollar a month no pressure but uh, lots of extra content going on over there for that dollar a month club uh, yes, and I will get to that. I can't promise to cast every game I get sent, of course, but I promise every replay I get sent will get looked at. That's the best I can do. Uh, before the game starts, I've got a message coming in from our dear dev leader, Yip. He would like to draw people's attention to this forum thread here. It's all about the next iteration of the FAF dev mod. That's the mod that allows you to play the next forthcoming patch so it can be tested and all that sort of thing. Um, I don't really understand a lot of it myself. It's definitely above my pay grade. You can see there's there's pictures, there's lines. I don't know if he's already added to it already or if he's going to add to it more in the future, but have a look at it nonetheless. Link will be in the description below. If you're more IT-minded than I am and you understand all of this stuff, look with the, with the different letters and the, the symbols, the numbers. Look, it's, it's so clever, isn't it? I don't understand it myself. But anyway, if that's your thing, do check it out. Link will be in the description below. Anyway, let's get on to today's game. As we said, it's going to be custom 6v6. It's going down on a generated map. I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ting! Ka-ching! Gosh, when there's a lot to get through on these intros, I'm almost exhausted before the game even starts. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top right and this Team 2 down here at the bottom left going First for Team 1, rearguard air position in combat green, we have Big Bang. There he is going Seraphim opening first land. Team member number two down here to his, well, his south, I suppose. It's Mythologist. He's going Aeon in Cyanide, Cyan opening first land. Team member number three to the southwest, it's Too Simp. I have to confess, when I first read it, I thought it was Too Simp. And I'm kind of gutted because there's a lot more jokes you can make about that. But it's not Too Simp. I could pretend there's an A, perhaps, and go Simba, but I'm not going to. Uh, he's going UEF. How terribly sensible opening first land in the season's fabulous Vivacious Violet. Team member number four over here to the northwest, it's Rezinoob. There he is. He's going Ferrari Red opening first land. Team member number five in Mellow Yellow. It's Legend Lord 2 going Seraphim opening first land. And last but not least, to the southwest, we have Vadislav. And he is also going uh, Seraphim. Did I say UEF? I might have said UEF last time. I can't remember what I said. Anyway, it's two Seraphim down here in Breast Cancer Awareness Big Opening First Land. So there we have it. A whopping three Seraphim now for Team 1. Two UEF there and an Aeon. Let's check out Team 2 rear got air position to begin with. It's our first Cybrin of the day. Bless him in regal purple. It's I say he went first land. Team member number 2 to his north. We've got Path Noah. How very apt. He's going Aeon in Halley Borange Orange opening first land second air. Team member number 3 on the front line going Burgundy Red. It's Air Alone, another Seraphim opening first land. Team member number 4 on his way towards the center. It's Edua who I just saw on the What's New page on Faf. He started his own Faf streaming channel. I'm not sure of the link, but do go on Faf today, guys, and check it out. I'm sure the link will be there. Anyway, he's going UEF, opening first land, going baby blue. Team member number five now down here by the pond. It's God Emperor going a Cybrin in lime green, opening first land, second air, and last but not least, on his way towards the middle, but stopping to get a forward land factory, it's Buzzle Bash, another UEF in electric blue, and he's gone first land, second land up there, and then going air all day by the looks of things down here, so that's quite a serious, serious investment into the air game. So racial disparities or differential 
for team two we've got one two uef uh a two Cybran got there in the end, a Seraphim and a day on. So there we have it. Game quality at 93%. We're pretty happy with that balance. It is not a team game after all. It is a custom game. You can tell immediately A by the fact that there aren't any team games in a 6v6. And of course, all the global rankings there rounded to the nearest hundred. So that's a dead giveaway if you're in a 4v4 or other potential format that could have been a ladder situation quick look at the map not a shabby amount of reclaim in the center you can see we've got units already moving in that direction buzzle bash looks like he might get there first although there is an air transport coming in for resi noob decent numbers we scroll out we can see maths fields of almost 3k a pop in the center four of them not too bad and uh, then little clumps of them kick kicking around the mass another two and a half k clump there a 1k there everything mirrored of course down here 5k there if you zoom right out yeah 5k there on the edge of the pond so decent mass fields kicking around nice even spread of mass points making map control important of course and uh, pockets of water around not really going to play much of a role i shouldn't think but it will give acus a place to hide if they're nearby and they get in trouble we do have two plateaus and otherwise assortment of random cliff edges kicking around but not really a great deal in the way of bottlenecks or anything so strategically speaking it's a pretty flat blank piece of paper so it's going to come down to general skill but then doesn't gay every game go that way anyway what's happening here so it's transports galore resi noob dropped off a bunch of engineers in the front but ed Dewar says no thank you my mass and is getting into it with his con but there are two labs left on board that courier so not a full ghetto gunship perhaps just a couple of labs riding shotgun but enough to kill an engineer or two that's for certain two engineers down there goes number three fourth one potentially in trouble where is the air support you can almost hear them yelling where's the air support there it is it took four civi civilian casualties to die it's much like the uh, ambulance service right now in the uk i probably shouldn't laugh about it uh <laughs> <laughs> that was harsh. I don't know where that came from. Interceptors finally dealing with that threat. Anyway, they are down that close. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. Apologies if uh, anybody's wanted an ambulance recently in the UK. Things not going well. Do you Americans? It's nothing to do with our NHS. It's the fact that we haven't put money into it. That's the problem. <laughs> I can just hear Americans from across the point. Well, I told you so. That's why our system is so great. Ours is fine. Just we don't put enough money into it that's the problem i don't know where it all goes it's going up every year but it's never enough but check this out acus converging on the mass field in the center right now a duo going scoopy scooperson but finds himself potentially in a 3v1 situation wisely backs up a bit to be honest i would be backing up a lot more than that if these these three guys decide to disregard this mass field they can put you out of the game right now big bang Fortunately for Edua is on a cigarette break there, hotboxing his ACU, why not? So currently it's just a 2v2. We've got some low order spam coming in from Team 1, but look at this, Mythologist threatening to join the party as well. So we've got four ACUs in the vicinity for Team 1, another ACU from Legend Lore up here working on his full uh, factory up front. We do have three ACUs, no sorry, that's two sim from Team 1, we've got three ACUs there for team two is there a fourth in the area nearest one apart from those three i guess is air alone all the way out there to the west but he's not going to be joining anytime soon so really this is a strong aggressive start on the ground from team one buzzle bash finding himself in a 2v1 situation now as he's sub about 40 percent of his base hp mythologist and two sim coming on pretty strong here threatening to push buzzle bash into the red sub 4000 hit points now i say coming in from the southwest to try and alleviate the pressure here we've also got a duo rejoining the fight some uh, quick land factory builds going down to try and impede the progress of these two comms from team one buzzle bash into the red on 2700 but he's out of the danger zone now of this fight and it's back to a regular old 2v2 to sim needs to make sure he's not overextended especially as we've got some ground forces moving in to join the fight now he's down to around 7200 hp but i think this might just fizzle but that might be a bad place to start a nano repair upgrade as 
In comes some light artillery, some further shells from Mythologist. Edua recognizes the threat, brings his common to kill off those artillery pieces. Buzzle Bash might have time to complete this upgrade. He's only about 45% done. He has got a T1 point defense just to his south here, which uh, either his engineers got going or his comm did. I think it must have been his engineers, but he's been forced to cancel that nano repair upgrade. That's a lot of wasted resources. Mythologist will be very happy with that. And with that cancel, both he and Resinoob are going to withdraw, and so are the ACUs from team two so no early ejections inside that initial passage of play but it could all change on a dime we've got some very badly damaged acus down here now i say on around 6500 buzzle bash up to 1500 and that's after he's done a bunch of repping as well so he must have been faring even worse a few moments ago t2 upgrade on the way for a duet they desperately could do with some tech two point defense in here to try and lock down the situation, prevent team two ACUs from advancing any further forward. We've also got a T2 upgrade on the way for Legend Law. That's very nearly done. There it goes. So upgrades are on the way across the board. Now we get a second attempt at the nano repair upgrade for Buzzle Bash. He's got 17% done on that. There goes the T2 upgrade for Edua. Completes his com. Upgrade gets straight to work on a triad. I say starts on assisting with it. We've got a little bit of a push underway, though, right now from Legend Law, but no. I don't think we're going to have enough units to break through here, and that triad is going to complete as well. Can the inbound Zooies take it down? Some of the shells do land, but not before those. Units are taken out. Not enough shells landing there. Sorry to finish off that T2 point defense. I've just realized I've closed the door with my cat in. <laughs> I close my office door to do these casts, and I usually remember to lock the cat on the outside of it. So I'm hopefully not going to get too distracted. But check this out a nice little mercy snipe. Who was that inbound from? Answers in the comments section below. I missed. Who got the kill there? Annoyingly, notify mod still hasn't been updated, so it still registers every kill as a control K. That definitely wasn't. So somebody, maybe we can work out just by looking at who's got T2 air. Well, it's Mercy, of course. So it would have been most likely uh, Mythologist. He is Aeon, the only Aeon player I think on Team One. I was like, uh, who's got, <laughs> who's got a T2 air factory? Uh, not him. Forgetting that he's UEF. Anyway, moving on. We'll forget that happened. I know you won't hold it against me because that would be gross. Uh, moving up on the eastern side of things up through the center now is a decent little push from God Emperor. Team 2 now with something to prove after losing one of their main players. 1800 I say and he was also their rear guard air position. He was uh, unusual to see him up front fighting so hard, getting in the mix. Instead of staying at the back and uh, teching up. Big bangs on the front line as well, though, for Team 1. So uh, it really was all hands to the fore. Two Sim now drawing fire from this horde of Mantis, which has moved up through the center or to the east side of the center. We've got some Spectres hovering over the top of this horde of spidery spam trying to thin them out to sim to stick with a decent chunk of hp and he's got mythologist in the area as well to assist both of these comms on around well actually i say that they were both on around 50 60 percent of their hp but to sim now drawing fire once again from all of the mantis it's on around 4600 hp this aggression from God Emperor continuing, but he's running low on units now. Mythologist leading to the fore now with a com with more HP left on it than Simb. Two Simb on 4,200. Mythologist on 7,400. Moving up through the center now is Buzzle Bash, who, after completing the nano repair upgrade, is looking considerably more healthy than he did a moment ago 
with his 50 point uh, 50 hit point a second regen on board that commander restoring HP at a rate of knots now going on the warpath he's got a decent amount of spam behind him backing him up but you've got to be so careful you've already seen one of your teammates get sniped by mercy fire you don't want that to happen to you but look at this a nice little passage of Corsair play would have been I say but a Dewar of course has taken over for I say trying to harass the back rear base the rear guard air position of big bang going after that power generator clipped it a little bit but engineers around here working on repairing it apologies for my squeaky mouse wheel it's still not had its uh, its uh, silicon treatment that everybody has been suggesting I go for it's like C3PO waiting for his oil bath get it eventually nice little push up through the center now from Aerolone just trying to chop down some of these defenses over here belong to Vadislav but he's run out of units and that will be an end to that back in the center mythologist and buzzle bash getting into it both of these comms have an upgraded gun mythologist as Aeon of course has the opportunity to go for double upgrades on his gun but he's only got the one for the time being he brings in one of his spectres, though, to start harassing the comm of Buzzle Bash. Buzzle Bash with now 14,000 hit points. The mythologist having repped up a little bit, too. He's back in the green over 10k now. A little bit further back, we have triads in place. Resi Noob working on a third. So Buzzle Bash is going to not want to sit inside their range. <laughs> ideally but he's not dropping back either so perhaps he is uh, trying to micromanage other things elsewhere as well as this fight you hear the commander under attack of course but you think you're just in a 1v1 situation against an opposing com but he's dropping back now and there's the mercy attempt takes him down to 1300 hit points mythologist though also very low on hp this could be a little bit of a com trade here who died first? Who can say? Does it really matter? There's two dead people in a nuclear fire right there. Almost on the nose of 15 minutes. That's another two people out of the game. But Team 1 now still ahead as that was a trade one for one. So it is now a 5 versus 4 in favour of Team 1. While we're talking about things in favour of teams let's have a quick look at the eco side of things well team two actually faring a little bit better it's 426 versus 354 that's reasonably significant they are behind team two by some well it's going to be about 17k 16 17k in total mass that's not enormous but a 30 40 mass point advantage on generated eco that can accumulate uh, differentials very very quickly indeed but check this out path Noah in a tricky situation up here in the northwest corner he's just flirting with the 25% threshold on his HP you can see that blinking into the red and then back into the yellow again 3,400 hit points on board that com with double gun upgrade but he's got a decent amount of support with him and he's also got some I say some he's got a TT unit with him He's going up against purely T1 right now, but Engineers back here trying to erect as many defenses as possible, trying to shut this attack down. They really need to just send this spam in and cut down that force of Engineers building new point defense. Down goes the Oblivion turret, which was soaking up a lot of that inbound damage. Down go the last of the point defense, and this forward position for legend law that's about to get run over and that will open the gate to full control of this top left hand corner potentially to path noah path noah's base sitting back here of course in between the rear guard air position and the front line position so he doesn't have to worry about trying to lock all of this down he has basically got using his base as the cash cow and he's brought his com up here this is his expeditionary force and he's just trying to conquer new territory and anyway he doesn't have to worry about it because Aerolone doing fine work over here against Vadislav, whose comm has dropped back into the water and is getting nano repair. But he's already got T2 engineering suite. He's already got a gun upgrade. So that's going to be a nasty looking Rambo comm. Aerolone might find it difficult to hang on to any of the territorial gains he's 
grabbed in the last few moments but up at the top left hand corner path noah absolutely about to evict legend law last couple of land factories remaining just up here to the northeast of that spam's position path noah advancing with his commander now and will we see him cross this pond i wonder and start trying to put some fire down on these bases he could come out he could threaten this mass point potentially if he gets out there in time that looks like a lot of tech two point defense which is queued up around there he will not want to be late to that party where is the inbound engineer working on it there it is uh, so potentially that's an option of course he could come in here around the side of Vadislav who's now emerged back out of the water to engage this ground spam of Aerolones with his upgraded chunky Rambocom in comes a wave of Janus just to soften up some of those forces but look at all of the ill shivers he's got down here that's a nasty T2 force Vlad Vladislav looking very dangerous right now meanwhile in the bottom right hand corner absolute dominance for God Emperor properly acting up to his name right now with a whole bunch of loyalists moving up forwards towards the middle we've got a couple of bernies out from two simb who are trying to impede the progress but they're not going to last very long forward land factories are going to go down to a valiant effort by simb to throw down a ravager relief of the land blocking a lot of that inbound fire oh, all you had to do was just leave one there that could hit it and that would have been the end of that as a result that Ravager might actually complete, but the force for that Ravager to shoot at looks like it's already moved on. And there's a gap. I hadn't realized for some reason I thought this cliff went right to the water here. But no, there is a gap. And those loyalists have found it. Moving up now and engaging vulnerable resourcing operations. More Bernies, though, lying in wait for them from Simb may be able to snag at least one more mechs before this attack peters out there's a vulnerable t2 they should be able to get that can they go for another or worse can they get into the main base up here of two sim i wonder there are now specters in play from resi noob three loyalists remaining a vulnerable fusion reactor surely that's what you go after and they've got that takes an engineer with it has that uh, done any real damage to two sims power grid well he's not got a lot of wiggle room there oh another mex goes down the second part of this attack underway as another group of those birdies make it into the main base core mass going down this is a wonderful attack from god emperor properly laying the smack down on two sim there goes another one. Oh, one left on 728 hit points or 778 hit points but god emperor runs out of bernies something you never want to do never want to run out of bernies and now he uh two sim is pulling in a paltry 19 mass per tick that has really not helped their team there is now a 200 mass point differential in generated eco and team two who were down a man are on the upside of that equation Total mass accrued. The thresholds just crossed one another. Team 2 emerges into the lead on Eco on both metrics now. So, yeah. They might be a man up, Team 1. But Eco-wise, things not looking brilliant, it has to be said. Chrono Dampener on the way for Path Noah. Wanting to continue to use his comm offensively. He's got double gun upgrade on board that commander now. That could potentially cause problems for Vlad over here. He's also a pretty chunky Rambocom, of course, but he might get tricked into relying too heavily on the amount of backup he's got. And if that ground spam is incapacitated by the Chrono Dampener, that's how you get yourself into a tight spot, as George Clooney would have said in... Uh, was that film oh brother where art thou there it is i'm pretty sure we're in a tight spot i don't know why on earth that sprung to mind who can say why anything works in my mind the way it does working might be a stretch 
What's going on over here? Resi Noob and to Simb advancing. Throwing down the odd emplacement here and there. That's a very sizable looking force of gunships right there. A lot of spectres moving towards the southeast and going after a huge force of Bernies. There is only one bouncer along with them. It's better than none, but he will be target number one. Amazingly, they didn't stick around to finish off the bouncer, but I guess they saw this inbound move from Ed Dewar. They were right there. You would have thought that that would have been the thing to go for, but he did manage to snag himself a mechs on the way out. These are all T1 mechs, though, so not an enormous... of pain on their opponents. Monkey Lord complete for God Emperor and now rolling out from the main base. God Emperor who's control of the southeast of the map and one of the bases up front in the center puts him way out in front for Team 2's mass generation at 310. Top rated player in the game Resi Noob has 350 though on team one 350 360 but as said before the accumulation cumulative mass income for team two far outstripping team one right now path noah and vladislav getting into it as we knew they would it's base health 2000 sorry 20,150 for vladislav path noah with 19,600, so not a huge gulf in difference between them, though. Look at the HP regen. It's 34 hit points a second for Path Noah. Vladislav, 104 hit points. It's also got a personal shield, or sorry, a, a uh, what do you call it? An Athena mobile shield gen in the area, although that's now bugging out. Oh, we've also got access to some T3 tech on both sides now. Harbingers and Othams in the area. So both of these comms need to be a little bit careful. Gunships defending against the push moving through the center there from Legend Law, but a massive push underway right now from God Emperor. He does manage to lose that spider bot, which didn't last very long, I think it's fair to say. What is shooting these gunships down? There must have been a bouncer or two in the mix of unit comp there. That was the force. We know there was at least one bouncer. Ah, uh, there we go. So we have some bouncers trailing. Perhaps the gunships strafe too cr close to them for the moment. But this push continues up towards Two Sims base. Forward structures under pressure here. Houses. T1 mass points and mass storage going down the same way as the factory there but this time this attack is much less of a threat than the previous one stopping well short of two sims base Percival's taking pot shots as they go happening over here in the west sizable gunship force with massive ASF escort detail here for Edua let me just have a very quick tally on ASF numbers we're at 32 ASFs for Big Bang we do also have a force for Resi Noob who's on 16 or 18 hard to tell from my angle on the screen there Edua However, with 104, so air dominance definitely with Team 2. Wave of scout planes out from Vlad. Vlad still working on some turret emplacements on the front line. Don't push please, says Buzzlebash. Walking presumably there to God Emperor, who's going to disregard his advice. <laughs> yeah. Didn't look 
like it was uh, going to work out there. Might have inflicted some damage with these bricks, but he would have lost all of them. And they're all very badly damaged and still absorbing Mercy Fire. Mercies which have featured pretty heavily in this game from Team 1. Don't always see them played a lot. You usually see them deployed either on snipe attempts or in desperation against inbound experimentals, but they're getting a real workout here today. Half Noah and Vlad getting into it over here in the west. Vlad into the yellow on about 11,000 hit points, but there's the gunship squadron. Where is the air support from T1? It's not even moving. They know they can't do much about it. Vlad trying to push his way back towards the shield jet over here, but isn't going to make it. Ouch, lovely snag there from a combination of Ed Chua and the pressure from Path Noah, who had a bunch of sniper bots in the area alongside his comm. Combined arms pressure taking Vlad out of the game. It is now a 4v4 game leveled in terms of player count, but Team 2 still way ahead by some at least 200 mass per tick. They now have, in total mass accrued, a 34k mass advantage. And that differential shows no signs of slowing down. That margin only going to get wider as the game continues, unless Team 1 can somehow find a way to claw themselves back to parity on mass generation. Fat Boy complete there in the center for Resi Noob who's doing a solid, solid job at trying to keep pace with Team 2. A couple of 400s there. Was, uh, must have been a support commander that went pop just outside the front line. Probably one of Resi Noobs. You can see we have some support commanders or another one there. Battle over this mass field. How much mass is there? Well, that area's got 30,000 mass in it. So a lot of mass that's ready to be scooped. 30,000 mass, that literally would almost wipe out the total mass differential in terms of total mass between these two teams. If Team 1 can get a hold on it all, that's probably why God Emperor is being so aggressive here, but he is going to run out of units and run out fast. Not much in the area, can't do much on Team 1's doorstep, so all of these engineers and support commanders moving in are going to have a field day with all of that reclaim. What is that? Is that... It's not a Billy Nuke, is it? No, just a regular old TAC missile. Besides, yeah, Path Noah sporting Aeon, not UEF. Ooh, another experimental monkey lord coming up from Medjua from the southwest. What's his trajectory? Moving up to join Path Noah, who's still looking pretty aggressive here. Yeah, not a shabby little force in the middle from Legend Lore either. Nice unit comp. He's got some mobile shield gens to protect these Othams. Lightning tanks, always good to see yourself some air coverage why not is the I'm not sure what the play is here is he trying to push towards the comp or is he just trying to isolate path Noah from the rest of team two a soul ripper complete for a duer that could cause real problems As could the Chrono Dampner on Path Noah. That's a fight, Legend Law. Absolutely cannot win. And he knows it, which he's backing up. That's why he's backing up towards his forward position. But he's not going to fare well against this inbound Soul Ripper either. One unit, the Lightning Tank that was in there that could have inflicted meager damage on that experimental has long since capitulated. Yeah, he really needs air support. Big Bang has got to find a way of churning out these ASFs quicker. There's a, uh, a hole in their strategy right now. You can see him moving up now, potentially to engage the Soul Ripper, Soul Ripper. But if he does, he's handing over 
not just air dominance, he's already behind on air dominance, but air control ostensibly to Edua because he will lose that air fight. He is down on ASF numbers. So he's going to shadow for the time being. We have a huge number of Ioshiva flak batteries moving in, mobile flak batteries around that fat boy. It's not going to stop the Soul Ripper from moving in though and engaging some of these units. There's the attack command for Big Bang. They are going to go after the Soul Ripper. One pass is more or less, more or less enough to shoot it down. Somehow it's still alive, but in come the Restorer gunships from Resinu. Big Bang takes an absolute kicking on his ASF count, and now Resinub is going to lose all of his Restorers to that huge ball of air superiority fighters from Edua. The last Restorer goes down, Edua brings those fighters out. Support commanders being airlifted over to that area of the battlefield, ARAS done for air alone that boy in the center for two sim just threatening to take out that central position of god emperor formerly buzzle bash fat boy unloading his artillery on Path Noah's spam. He was lucky to survive that interaction with the Soul Ripper. Soul Ripper managed to lay down some pressure, but both the Fat Boy and the Ethota survived, and now that really threatens Path Noah's presence up here in the northwest. There is the com. There he is, but he's got a GC. And that will finish off the Ethota at the very least. Another support commander going pop in the east. Advanced and a repair on the way for Big Bang. That's an interesting decision. It's a curious. Unless you're planning to take that comm and drop it somewhere sensitive. Which he may be planning to do, but it's very risky at this stage in the game. Experimentals dotted about everywhere. Large groups of strategic bombers, for instance. You might not know about those, but you've got to expect there's toys like that lurking on the battlefield. But a big old clump of them, nonetheless, going up towards the top left corner of the map. For Edua, literally, there's the the waypoint command. So he's looking probably for an approach in towards the main bases. We've got two comms clumped up close together, Resinub and Two Sim. This is what Team Two can see. Someone has highlighted one of the comms, Com 2200, i.e. Resi. They know Resi's there. It was Buzzle Bash who spotted it from beyond the grave. In comes those group of Revenants, evil Cybrin spy planes. Just showing up there. You can see they've got their stealth activated. They're not spy planes, but you know what I mean. Secret stealthy people. They drop their payloads. And instead of hitting Resi, it looks like they actually went after two Sim. Despite the flak and the Sams on the ground, they are still alive. And drop they drop one bomb on one of the shields of Big Bang's base, and then they're going to come back for another approach on Two Sim, who is rooted to the spot on an upgrade, going for a shield gen. He's just left his protection to Resinu. It's like you deal with the shields, will you, love? I'm uh, I'm busy. <laughs> Idle factories. Vladislav pointing out to his uh, teammate to Sim. What are you doing? Get building. We need more units. That one was uh, upgrading. I mean, that's not idle. I don't really know why he's uh, 
Like what? What are you saying there? <laughs> Answers in the comment section below if you know what that was about. Corsair attack on that Ithota, which has got 81 kills to its name. Edua making use of all of the tech trees. Still putting cheaper bombers to good work. In comes the aerial response. Big Bang going to cut those to ribbons with his air superiority fighters, but the damage has been done. Chicken taken out of commission. And a nice little pushback potentially brewing over here, just to the east, southeast of mid here. Two fat boys for two Simba and one fat boy for Resi Noob. Laying down long range artillery fire on positions belonging to God Emperor. God Emperor does have a megalith which has been in the wars. You can see it's got 15,000 HP left deep in the red. It's got 45 kills. Not that far off a ranking vet. Look at that lovely defense. That is... Oh my goodness, that is nerdgasmingly fantastic. <laughs> Look at that. Clink hammers all round. It could probably do with a few T1P gens in there to assist with rate of fire but that is absolutely brutal for any inbound force what a wonderful defense line on so there there was me saying the relief of the land wasn't particularly exciting on this map that is a perfect little defense line up front guarding the entry points into team 2's base Things I love about this compared to other RTSs. And the positions feel like they mean something when it comes to fortification. Fat boys slowly moving southwards, except for Resi Noob, who's on the run here against these inbound bricks, but a lot of these bricks are going to fall to all of this fat boy fire which they're getting from Resi Noob and from the two pursuing fat boys from behind here from 2 Sim so I think Resi Noob's fatty is going to be okay we are at the later phase of the game now Edua spotting a nuke launcher or is he telling someone where to nuke perhaps He's saying where to nuke. But yeah, we were just looking at T3 artillery there from Edua. What is his current target? Going after Legend Law. There is a strategic missile defense there. Silo with one anti nuke missile loaded strategic already. Where is that going and who's it out from? Goodness me, I'm absolutely blind. Where is it? Eyes can't focus. There it is. So out from God Emperor. And it's focusing on that huge pile of inbound units. Two fat boys caught in the plus radius there. Two Sim losing two of those. That's wonderful nuclear base defense. Resi Noob still with an operational fatty. A big old wall section in the way though engineers working on a bunch of clink hammers but Resi Noob has spotted the threat trained his fat boy cannons onto that position I'm surprised the engineers have lasted so long that will be the end of that although he seems to have switched fire targets to the other ones over here that could be a bit of a mistake there's still two four five operational NGs it's like Hitler getting upset that the British bombed the cities and moving on to London and other cities instead of carrying on pressuring the airfields which if you didn't know probably cost him the war certainly in the West anyway
Strategic launch detected. Zar moving in. Path Noah looking to grab a few kills with that, but that's a huge abundance of anti-air capability capability that Resi Noob has at his disposal. Second nuke out. This time it's heading up towards Legend Law's base, this area up here, but there was a anti-nuke loaded over here. Another nuke out. This is nuke number three from Team 2 now. So both Air Alone... God Emperor and was it also a Jewer who launched that other nuke? Maybe two of them came out of air alone. This second one is going to pass this silo at least. That only had one anti nuke missile in it. It's not going deep into the back, it's going to the front line. Will this fatty get caught in the blast? Yes, it will. Perfectly placed. Two mass points down, a whole bunch of units and defenses go up as well. That Tsar into the yellow, 26,000 hit points. Still looking to dish out some damage. Hello, saucy little GC snuck in through the pond at the top of the screen. Path Noah didn't make any real breakthrough there. It is best, and that's all that's important at the end of the day. We seem to be witnessing an increase in the amount of ordnance that's heading that direction. Two disruptors operational now. Monkey Lord next on the build queue. Where is... That inbound fire being trained. It looks like Big Bang is the lucky recipient. Oh my goodness, what on earth picked him up? Answers in the comment section below if you saw that. GG, it's game over anyway, it says Legend Law. Well, you never know. Bro, I have eyes. Apparently I don't. And <laughs> why didn't you save him, says God Emperor. It's all going off in chat. Could have grabbed him there. Was that some kind of air attack potentially while I was waffling on about uh, inbound artillery on Big Bang's base? Quite possibly. Those artillery shells are starting to land now. But yeah, do let us know in the comment section, guys. With, ooh, hang on, was that that Tsar? I think it was. So that Tsar did get shot down. But it's all over essentially friendly territory now. It's Team 2's side of the front line just. It's arguably on the front line. But Edua and Parthno are rushing in with their build capacity to hoover up that mass. This front line edging further forward. It might drop back slightly as a couple of chickens move in from Resi Noob. God Emperor with the unlikely play. I mean, he's Cybron, so he's going for a tele snipe. How unlikely is it, re really? Completed microwave laser and now starting work on a teleporter. 30% done there. Those Ithotas marching up on the front line. Trouble is there's a Tsar inbound and a GC. And a lot of ground spam. The crashed Tsar has already been hoovered up. That mass flowing back into Team 2's coffers. We've also got a teleporter on the way for Big Bang. So, could he be... With the Big Bang, didn't he also go for... Went for Nano Repair earlier, but he hasn't got that on board. He's got Advanced RAS and T3 Engineering Suite. Sort of feels like Big Bang doesn't know what his next move is here, maybe... It 
just build ASFs, essentially. Try and win air, and then try and do things with air stuff. <laughs> that should be your main focus right now. Look for a good engage. Ethota getting obliterated by the giant Independence Day style beam. Oh! And there's the tele snipe attempt. It's God Emperor who finishes the teleporter first, goes after Big Bang. Big Bang actually finished his as well, but down he goes. So God Emperor snags the kill, but he is he has to get out of there if he wants to make this pay off. And he's in a rather precarious position as Mercy's rolling in, support commander's rolling in, restorer's overhead. So that was uh, it was a player trade, one for one. But it does take Team 1 down to just two players. It's a two versus three right now. Resi Noob, admittedly a 2200 with 1.1k income. Can he make this pay? That's the question. Slow ass game, says Ajua. That's pretty fast pace from my point of view. There's always been something going on. He perhaps means it was a laggy game. And actually thinking about it in the faff information I seem to remember it being ridiculously long in terms of game time compared to the amount of time that the game actually ran. Nice nuke there hitting another fatty on the front line. These constant attacks just slowly whittling down Team 1's firepower. Where they are getting some gains is down here at the bottom right but that might be about to be a thing of the past as an experimental bomber over the top from Ed Jua, threatening that position. That forced handful of fighters coming after this experimental bomber. Resi Noob going all out and just binning his air force. I have to wonder whether that was a bit of a misclick. And he sent his fighters in without properly respecting the threat it has to has to have been a misclick surely experimental bomber still alive has got some 14,000 hit points lovely trio of monkey lords up front as well pushing deep into enemy territory up here we've got inbound strat bombers looking to deal with those they'll get their first payload off on one of them but that will provoke a response and there it is a duo getting his fighters in behind those strats and dishing out a lot of damage will any of them survive no no they will not is the answer to that Edua did lose a lot of fighters flying over the top of all of these various sam sites there's still two monkey lords in the center We have actually got artillery moving in the opposite direction for once. Resi Noob with an operational duke. He's working on another one. Huge numbers of rover drones to assist the construction of this artillery installation. Multiple batteries. see a couple of these uh, or a one of these disruptors and one of these ion reactors have taken damage another ion reactor has been completely destroyed we've also got a wrecked air factory over here so some of these duke shells might be breaking through that is very vulnerable I don't know if the dukes can actually reach that far that's the back duke and it can hit everything on the map so a spy plane would tell him that that is a very vulnerable place to hit and you could kill off all, more or less all, of Team 2's air production capability. That's where the Duke shells should be aiming. Another strap bomb attack from Team 2. This time it's air alone going after the Dukes. They've depleted the shields. One or two of those bombs are going to land. They're going to get a second pass with at least some of these strats. But they're falling in number pretty fast. 
Shields have blinked back on. That's going to block the second volley. And that will be the end of that attack in any meaningful way, shape or form. But look at this attack. Rolling in on the ground and the air. Path Noah with a GC and a ton of ground forces supporting it. If you get that donut in on top, maybe just let it fall on those artillery pieces if that's what they're worried about. It's certainly a threat. Threat to those naked air production facilities at the back. But I just... Oh, he's too hung up on these disruptors. And I think he's going to lose these dukes before he can recognize the opportunity. Shields blink back on once again. One reactor down. Another shield gen down. In comes the GC, but it's very low on HP. There's a lot of ravages in the area. GC down. Zar shot out of the sky. It lands on top of the Duke, but the Duke somehow survives. 5,000 hit points there. Did it take out an anti-nuke because... Air alone wasting no time in launching a nuke, presumably in this general direction. No, he's not. He's going after the front line on the other side. He's going after two sim. Strategic launch detected. But I don't think it makes any difference. These dukes are going to get taken out. One of the dukes has gone down. There's still an operational one further back. But we've got harbingers and sniper bots. Rolling up on the front line. The shields are kind of holding. There's a huge quantity of ravagers, remember, back here. Maybe this attack has stalled. Allowing Resinoob to hold on to another duke. Nope, there's another GC. Oh, and Resinoob coming out to meet it. To meet his maker. Is he thinking with his overcharge, maybe he can dish out enough damage, damage with the Ravagers to take this puppy down before it breaks through the shield. GC down to 40,000 hit points and falling rapidly, but the shield does collapse briefly. In come the Rover Drones to start work on repairs of the Duke. Oh, it's going to be close. Wow, the Duke survives. 1,100 hit points. Immediately they get to work on new shield gens, but in comes another volley of Disruptor Fire. There's just too much ordnance inbound on that position. Resi Noob getting hit with some sniper bot fire back here. And there's the Control K out from him at 53 minutes, leaving to Sim all by his lonesome and another nuke inbound. I think we know which way this game is going. Is the nuke going to detonate? Is that the second Control K? Yes, it is. So two Sim bows out as well at 53 minutes. And referring to what I was saying before about the slow-ass game that they were talking about in the comment section, uh, or rather, not in the comment section, in the chat. Um, yeah, I think this game for them ran like an hour and 20, an hour and 30 minutes, so it was very, very laggy on their end. Somebody must have been downloading something they shouldn't. And uh, yeah, they probably had enough of it by the end. That's why we got those last couple of control Ks. But really, there was no way out from Team 1's perspective. Relentless attack on the ground and those donuts coming in repeatedly from both, uh, who was it, both Edua and uh, Path Noah. Oh, all this pressure coming in from the West. It was only going to go one way, really. God Emperor got himself killed off in that tele snipe attempt, of course. But Ed Dewar firmly in control of the bottom right. There was nothing coming south. It was all well and truly sewn up. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Don't forget, if you want more content, there are some... seven. I want to say 70, 71 casts on the premium channel now. More growing all the time. There'll be another one out this week, so do check that out. Just a dollar a month content there growing all the time and your support means a great deal it really does help me so consider that guys thanks for watching but until next time stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out